Okay, it can be daytime now. I got the uh, I got the skull tool as I wanted. <laughs> it's good that we have max rupees. Cause I'm about to spend some rupees, and coming up shortly is the place in the game where I need to have the most rupees on hand. But I have a plan and a backup plan for this rupee situation. So if... We're, don't worry, there's not going to be a video where I just have to farm rupees for the entire time. That's not going to happen. I made sure of that. And after you talk to her three times, she will teach you a new song. Here we go. AXY, AXY. It's the Axie Axie Horks Horse Song. Axie Horks Song? Epona's a Horks, we've decided. So this song has the major use of it is to summon Epona to your position in an overworld area, but you can't do it as Kid Link, because Kid Link doesn't know how to ride a horse, and Epona's too young to ride right now anyway. But, if you play it next to a cow, and you have a bottle, the, uh, the song will fill up your bottle with milk. Speaking of milk, there's one last thing we want to do here. Manhandle some chickens. So this is a pretty well-known trick to make this little mini-game a little easier. Oops, I don't want to talk to you yet. So if you're a speed reader, you saw what Talon has to offer here. Oh, this chicken. I was trying to pick up this chicken. No, I don't want to play your game yet. I mean, I do want to play your game in a minute, but first I have to touch all of your chickens. I want to corral them all back in this little corner, because what he's going to do is throw three identical looking chickens out into the universe here, and he'll be like, if you find all those chickens, I'll give you a million dollars and a Ferrari, and it's like, I want a Ferrari, right? But if you've packed all his chickens back by the stairs, his three super chickens that you need to find are incredibly easy to, to locate. I wish that I could tell you that I figured this out myself as a kid. I didn't. I read this online after I had played the game a couple times. I don't know, read it on, on RP Gamers forums or something. Like, hey, if you hide all of his chickens behind him by the stairs. It's super easy to find the super chickens. Otherwise, your only recourse is to try to pick them out from amongst the crowd. Although, I think he throws all three of those cuckoos to the same spot in the room every single time. So you could also just memorize the spot. Now, if you look in the distance, you'll see it's daytime. But Hyrule Castle Drawbridge is up. That can't bode well. I'm sure that doesn't mean anything good. And it's getting darker as we're getting closer. Mm. Starting to weird me out a little bit, kids. Here we go. Cutscene, cutscene. really should have poured myself a glass of water before recording because I am parched. Unfortunately, none of all of the river, the, the fountain, the lake, all of that stuff that we just did, did absolutely nothing to quench my thirst. It's fine. I'll live. 
I suffer from my art. Ooh, I didn't equip my my shield back the way it was. You want to use the Deku shield inside Jabu Jabu's belly. There's no risk of it burning because there's no fire monsters in there. Man, that'd be weird, right? Like, if the giant fish god ate fire? Huh. Uh, but I want to make sure to do that so I don't forget later when we're Kid Link once again. This is a great scene, by the way. I love that, where he just stares Ganondorf down, then draws his little butter knife. Eight-year-old kid. That's great. What a, what a kick-ass scene. Just the resolve of this little kid. At One of this game's contemporaries on the PlayStation was Breath of Fire 3. It has a similar scene where you play a little kid with a sword. And his attack animation with the sword is to like hide his eyes with one hand and wave the sword wildly with his other hand. Like he's like not confident with the weapon at all. But then at some point in the game, he meets the little princess who joins the party. And as soon as the little princess joins the party, he starts swinging the sword confidently instead. He like levels up his swordsmanship in order to help protect his little princess friend. And it's like, oh, it's adorable. Uh, can you pick the thing up out of the water, please? There you go. So, our best friend Saria gave us her most treasured possession, the fairy ocarina. And then a week later, the princess gives us the ocarina of time. And we're like, you know what? We're just going to flush this fairy ocarina down the toilet. This fairy ocarina has no value to anybody, ever, for any reason. <laughs> like, the least we could do is go give it back to Saria. Like, hey, thanks for letting me borrow this, but I have this princess's really expensive magic ocarina now. Y-L-R, Y-L-R. The Song of Time is doubly important in this game's... Uh, like, pseudo-sequel, Majora's Mask, because that game, instead of traveling back and forth through time like you do in Ocarina, it has a time loop that you use the Song of Time and some variants of it in order to control. The Zelda series is kind of strange, because technically there, there are a bunch of sequels, right? But... Oh, the game's kind of... I know there's a timeline. Somebody's going to scroll down and be like, There's a timeline! Nope, you know what? Screw your timeline, buddy. I don't want to hear it. But some of the games do have direct sequels. Like Majora's Mask is a direct sequel of Ocarina of Time. And things are really dire right now. Like the princess is on the run. Ganondorf's on the loose. So let's play some carnival games. Let's try to forget our cares by playing the one mini game in the game in Ocarina that I really love is Bomb Chew Bowling. Uh, okay, well, that's not the prize that I wanted, but we will try to win it because it's a purple rupee. It's just so satisfying blowing up that goddamn wall. I love it. It's also pretty easy, really, as long as you don't hit the spikety ball or the chickens? We just have to wait because there's the little chicken out at mid-range there. And then there's Big Papa Chicken out there in his little hole. That's good. Oh, Big Papa Chicken's in the way. Nope. Looks like we're good. We got it. So we want some rupees. We have to make sure we don't go under 70 rupees. There's a piece of heart here. Which is the prize that I want. There's a couple other prizes that might pop up. Hey, you know what? Bomb shoes. We'll take bomb shoes early. So this game came out around the time... Either just before or just after the first Pokemon game came out in... North America. So having the bomb shoe, which is an exploding Pikachu, essentially... 
That was not the right angle. Let's try that. That's even worse. That looks right. No! Bombed you! Why? Oh, goodness. Can we... Okay, hold on, hold on. There we go. I got four more. The, the ones on the sides there. Sometimes those second ones appear on the sides. Those are the toughest, in my opinion. These middle ones are a lot easier. Nope. Chicken's gonna be in the way. He's not! Oh, look at that. He slid out the way. Say, hey, we got some early bomb chews. I'm not gonna use those ever. <laughs> I have no idea what I would use these for. Hey, there's my there's my heart piece. If we win this, we're done with bomb chew bowling. If we lose, then I don't want to go beneath 70. Ru I need 70 rupees when we're all all of a sudden done here. Oh, that angle was weird for some reason. Uh, is that going to do it? Are you going to get in there? Not quite. Oh, chicken's right in the way. So is spikety. Okay, I got to be careful here. That's good. That's right down the center. That's what I want. We got to be real careful. We got, I mean, we got four bomb twos. We can screw this up a couple times, but... Oh, Chicken's position was real good to start. Big Papa Chicken. Oh, he might be... Nope, 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 nope. Nice. Right under his butt. Right behind them tail feathers, buddy. That's how we do it. The other major prize you could win here is another bomb bag upgrade. And go up to 60... I think it's 60 bombs, but... It might be only... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Um, you know what? I don't care about just winning some bombs, so let's just throw all the bomb shoes out. We'll just throw the game... Oh, I just blew myself up with the bomb chews. <laughs> Alright. I mean, thank you. It was fun. I enjoyed it. Okay, we have... Uh... Again, it's really imperative we get to the Temple of Time as soon as possible. And get on with saving Hyrule. But, I mean, there's other stuff to do first. There's the mask shop. We're not going to do any of the happy mask stuff, but just so you know where it is. There's also a shooting gallery that we could play to get another seed upgrade. We're not going to do that either. I feel like if you get one upgrade for your major things, for your slingshot, your bow, your bombs, that's really all you need. And even that, you don't really need. Uh, there are places in the game where I have run out of arrows at a critical moment, though. So getting a quiver upgrade is definitely something I'm interested in. I can blow this wall up now. There are about 50 different speedrunning categories for Ocarina of Time. Like, it's impossible to keep them all straight. But I'm pretty sure in at least a couple of them, finding a way to get early bomb chews is pretty critical because if you can get early bomb chews and there's a couple glitchy ways to do it i think but then you can essentially skip ahead of a lot of the child uh part of the game because you don't have to wait to get your bomb bag bomb chews aren't explosive they anything a bomb can do a bomb chew can do and then in twilight princess they called them bomblings and it was like man that's not that's not as fun to say Bomblings? Gross. This is a required item. I'm pretty sure this is our second magic spell, Din's Fire. It's technically the first magic spell because the fairy up on Death Mountain tells you to come here and get this spell. But I didn't want to come back to the market until it was time to go to the Temple of Time. I didn't want to make two trips back to the castle town. Uh... But I'm pretty sure this is the only of the three spells that's required. I think you need Din's Fire in one place to finish the game. And there's a couple places where you don't technically need it, but it's super helpful to have it. Yeah, go ahead and throw me out. I'm done. I'm done here, brother. Okay, fine. Fine. I won't slingshot you in the nose. Your nose is incorporeal. 
There's another heart piece we could get if we changed it to night, and then there's a lady who's like, I lost my dog, and you gotta find her dog, but there's 50 dogs, and I don't know which, like, I, I, I don't know which dog it is, and... Like, look, I like heart pieces. I enjoy collecting heart pieces. I'm gonna collect a bunch of them, but even I have my limits. I will bomb shoot bowl for heart pieces, but I will not slingshot shooting gallery for heart pieces. Only play the mini games you enjoy. There's there's one mini game I'm gonna play that I don't really enjoy, and the reason what am I doing? YLR YLR. Uh, the only reason I'm gonna play it is because I really think it's important to get a quiver upgrade. There's two different shooting mini games once we get the bow, and you have to complete. Each one gives you a quiver upgrade to carry more arrows, so you've got to do at least one of them, or there are some spots where you risk running out of arrows. But we'll do the more fun of the two, and the e in my opinion, the easier of the two, and the one that's easier to get the heart piece from. And then we won't run out of arrows, like a chump sickle. Oh man, you guys. I was a little taken aback the first time I played this game at the reveal of the ma how it has this the master sword has this gigantic just cavernous chamber dedicated to it and how it has the sunlight streaming in on it because it's such a huge contrast from collecting the master sword and link to the past or it plays like the same song here like it has the same sound basically and it's a major turning point in the game where you complete the first uh, like linear like easy dungeons before you go into the more non-linear more difficult part of the game but in Link to the Past it's like it's out in the middle of a, a forbidden forgotten forest and in this game, it's in the middle of this temple that's been sealed away, but it's in the middle of Hyrule Castle Town. Like, these people revere the Master Sword, and they've built this huge temple around it. So Ocarina kind of changes the mythos of the Master Sword from what came before in Link to the Past. And I remember as a kid being taken aback by that, being like, wow, it was a real jolt. I was absolutely not expecting to pull the Master Sword and then travel through... Like, I knew time travel was going to be a thing in the game, because it's in the title. And because at this stage of the game, you've just picked up the Ocarina of Time itself. But I was not expecting... Like, the Master Sword to be the conduit through which T-Boz travels from his child and adult incarnations. Navi is super excited that I'm a big hunk of hunk of man right now. She cannot contain herself. It's going into the I say the second half of the game here, but it's actually we're not quite halfway through yet. We completed the three short easy dungeons and there's five much more difficult expansive dungeons ahead of us plus lots and lots of other stuff but the second port the second act of ocarina of time is much more non-linear if you know what you're doing there's lots of different things you can do and there's a guided order to the game that the game kind of expects you to go through but the plot gating is such that you have lots of options in what order to tackle the various dungeons and the various other tasks that remain. 
So I'm going to have to go, and we have our mo way more than 70 rupees, which is excellent, excellent. I'm going to have to go, though, guys, and have me a good long think about what order I want to tackle the rest of this game in. And so... Oh, I was about to say this is where I leave you, etc., etc., but I forgot this scene. So, let, let's pretend like I didn't say any of that yet. Let's pretend like I wasn't about to segue into my outro, because we've got to watch the thing with Sheik real quick. Yeah, this scene. I forgot about this. I totally... I spaced on this. You know what it is? It's because Sheik teaches you a bunch of different ocarina songs... One for each of the six temples. And I was thinking there wasn't a scene with Sheik except for the Ocarina songs, but I guess there is, because there's this one. Where she tells you that, you know, there are five temples and where they are. And now, my dear friends, I leave you. Thanks so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll play some more Ocarina of Time. Shoutouts to Montezuma Mike, who sponsored this video, and to everybody who helps make my channel possible by supporting me on Patreon.